right, so I'm glad that I finally got uh, the chance to watch this anime. It's one, it's one of those anime which I've been meaning to watch for a long time. So thank you for that. Um, the world building um, is the most controversial thing which I've seen when people discussing this series. Um, for Darker Than Black? Yeah, for, for the few reviews that uh, I got the chance to watch. Now, why exactly? Well, this people seem seem to complain about how uh, it's like the the writers just introduced so many different elements, uh, which overcomplicated it, uh, and okay. may, may not uh, have been necessary. For example, uh, the wall and the fact that thing the the, the sky is fake. Um, for example, uh, so maybe it would be a good I- be, be a good idea to explain no. the setting. No, you don't think no, it's no, uh, like uh, I, I, I would have to hard agree and say that the those people are uh, idiots. Like <laughs> the well, the show really, really works. It works on a lot of levels, but one of them is the story and the world building. And the world that it sets up is this strange claustrophobic world. They're cut off from the outside. They can't, they've got a fake sky over them. Parts of these major cities have these gates, which if you cross over into them, it's like you die and you basically are interacting with uh, the true reality and the human brain can't take it. Um, and, and some people get end up getting magic powers from it. But what, what I I really enjoyed about it was the fact that the the whole scenario and all the background was explored very very thoroughly and, and that these people don't appreciate this but like a show like Evangelion or something this is never just dropped on as a giant plot dump it is slowly pulsed out it is slowly revealed this is what's about this show and as uh, it only happens as is necessary hell the main character's name i don't believe is said until episode seven like he goes under an alias but you hear nothing but his alias until like that far in and it's fine it worked uh about the main yeah character- and then, or, just to back up heraculous's point like a lot of the show is like show don't tell like you know and it's also like i mean people may complain how complex it is but you know it's this these multi-layered conspiracies you know intelligence agencies fighting each other you know and the 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 syndicate that's run by pizza hut like yes i know of the symbolism that's going on there like clearly the syndicate's pizza hut it, it's what is to... it about pizza hut advertising and anime in this like one period like two code geass era I, I i mean here's the thing in code geass like you know cc um uh, like basically founded pizza hut and that's how they're funding their terrorism you know here <laughs> pizza hut's literally like this uh, the the head of this major like conspiracy involving assassins and shit like that like it's, it's very subtle but you, you see how much it comes up i'm like oh i see he works for pizza hut okay <laughs> Yeah. So I guess uh, in that case, would Violet Primrose be its competitor? Yeah. It... Yes, they're dominoes. Yeah, they couldn't uh, get uh, support from Coca Cola though, because uh, they always have uh, you know a fake Coca Cola signs here and there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. They, uh, yeah. Coca Cola goes defunct. You know they couldn't afford the Coca Cola death squads, which, by the way, actually exist in real life. By the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. So. So if I understand correctly, there's there's two uh, gates, right? Uh, Heaven's Gate and Hell's Gate. Uh, Heaven's Gate is is in um, South America, where there was a war. Well, it was. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> South America doesn't uh, exist anymore. So I guess uh, the, the the Americans no longer have an immigration problem in that <laughs> setting. What a shame! Tragic. I, yeah, and. Uh, no. Yeah, I'll protect. I'm gonna have to nerd yeah. on you for a second. There is no usable land bridge from South America to North America. Oh yeah, that is that isn't. I didn't know that. Uh, you you can't. Uh, I mean, it looks. It, I mean, if you look at it from a map, it looks pretty close, but no, not close enough. Yes, yeah, like the whole area through there is a bunch of marshes that are basically impassable for any human being who's trying to walk it. But uh, any anywho, uh, yeah. 
yeah, you you only slowly get revealed uh, ten episodes in or so that there was some event uh, that, and it's not like South America blew up. It was like an area centered around Brazil, and everyone died. Yeah, and I, I that think... whole area is uninhabitable now. Yeah. Um... I think this they sometimes sometimes implied that there was a war in order to get to control it, and that's what what it caused. Yes, there was an actual it. war. Um, it's very much like yo know, COVID ops, CIA. You know, oh, you know, ignore that explosion in the in the background. That was just a gas explosion. Shut up. Yeah, and and the protagonist uh, Hay was involved in that war, and we slowly get to know what happened um, through the overarching plot. Even though most of the story is in um, two part. Uh, uh, two episode, uh, by episodic, episodic kind of uh, episodic kind of. Uh, there's a word to describe it, but I I forget like vignettes almost. Um, and I found out that, uh, well, according to Wikipedia anyway, that it's because the director got the idea because he uh, he used to be a storyboarder for Cowboy Bebop. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually, now, you, now that I think about it. Um, another series which you, comp- you, you compared this to uh, Heraclius. Uh, was Big O. Uh, what similarities do you see? I basically see the similarities in the overall setting, um, in how episodic it is, but also in sort of how claustrophobic it is, and how you have this strange setting that's somewhat supernatural can't be easily explained away. Uh, the difference being that Darker Than Black, to my knowledge, really doesn't attempt to explain away the whole setting. Uh, it, it, it gets to... It gives you pieces and whatnot, but it never tries to explain it away, which was the intention of bigger writers. They wanted it to be like this, where it was a function for a greater overall story, and that it, it was interesting setting for episodic stories, which is very much what the show is at the start. It's like every episode is or a couple of episodes usually it's usually arcs, uh, is a new bit of storytelling. Like you, you get to see, for example, the uh, basically one of the police heads, chiefs, that her relationship with this uh, crime syndicate girl, and how that ends up going a little bit sour, despite their long-standing friendship. Not in a way that you'd necessarily... Or the, um, the other, uh, well, or the other episode where we see actually someone turn into a contract, you like, turn to someone with powers and the slow, like, transformation of that. Yeah, uh, 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 and how she just becomes a danger to everyone she loves around them. Like, this show can be pretty Dark. fucking brutal. Dark, brutal. Like, like unforgiving dark unforgiving yeah uh, and i really do uh, appreciate that at times hey himself main character who we haven't talked about he goes under the alias leash sanction for mo- most of the time uh, he also goes by the black reaper chinese electric batman and sigma male grind set <laughs> chinese electric batman as well put uh he he is in some ways your archetypal anti-hero yeah if that... i remember correctly um i think the specific trope he is is that like he's the 90s anti-hero like he is a like no, like if you go I... on like tvtropes.org and i know i'm not citing them as like a source but like uh they kind of label him as like the, the 90s anti-hero yeah yeah that that would be more or less accurate because he's the type of character who he has a job to do and he's going to follow his job and that's what he's here to do but uh that doesn't mean that he's not going to bend the rules very slightly to try and help people along through there but at the same time he's not putting his neck out unless it's like yeah and also like he's got his own agenda as well like that's the very interesting thing i find about Hayes. Like, like the more you learn about him the more interesting he becomes it's like oh why is he doing this like oh okay that's got that's what's going on like it's it's, it's very interesting how hey in some ways you know, you do seem like bend the rules uh slightly or like you know interpret uh loosely interpret orders yeah orders um, from the syndicate uh yeah you mean, and... you mean orders from pizza hut yeah yeah, um, I guess we could explain what the syndicate is. I, uh, I briefly, so, so the syndicate uh, syndicate is a nebulous organization whose go- goals uh, are a mystery to us for most of the series. And until, I, at least till the end. Yes. I mean, are they meant to be the triads or something? No, they're Pizza Hut. <laughs> Uh, and uh, as with Big O, 
I felt that um, as they were like a, like as the mask slipped, um, it didn't seem as dangerous and powerful. I mean, they were, but uh, it became less interesting when they revealed uh, who they actually were uh, to me, anyway. Um, uh, about the contractors, uh, the interesting thing about them is that they have to pay a price in order to, every time they use their powers. Um, for example, one of them might have to uh, break their fingers uh, after using their powers, or uh, it could be uh, something like smoking a cigarette or going to sleep. Um, I can't think of anywhere else where I've seen this use. Yeah, one of the things that I really like about it is... Well, I mean, it, it, it's an all-right setup. It, it, it is sort of like, okay, you've made a contract, you have to pay a price. But what I found interesting is they never directly explain to you Hayes' contract. Instead, he just ends up... You see him eating a lot. And then I'm like, around episode 7, when the contract idea has been really thoroughly uh, set down and you see him eating a lot again you go oh that's his contract that's that that's why he can like, eat so fucking many bowls of ramen mm -hmm. uh, did, you, um, did you guys like watch the ending episodes by the way i did yeah yeah uh Horakis, i hate to tell you but um him eating a lot of food isn't part of his contract what uh, i i hate to um i don't want to spoil it to you but um he actually doesn't have a price to pay actually oh yeah i saw something i i know he yeah he's like an exception or something i saw in one of the synopsis yeah because yeah the the reason for that, right, is that his sister merged with him, and so basically he has he he's he's no, no, no. he's like ha he's like partially a contractor. He has the powers, but none of the down benefits because uh like his sister's like contract was just like take a nap or something like something really benign like that. But um yeah, yeah like hey is a contractor, but at the same time he's not like exactly a contractor. And you see this quite a few times. And they actually hinted at this right is that you know contractors are you know roof like they are they always take they always they always make the most rational decision you know like they, they'll fucking yes, like sell out their, their kids and they keep repeating this line over and over again Contra uh, especially at the early on contractors are ruthless killers you can never trust contractors always make the most rational decision uh, con uh contractors are can never be trusted and we start to see over and over again how that's mostly true but and especially true for someone who doesn't want to get caught up in this world because the whole existence of these people is covered up but you keep yeah, saying like if you're a contract and if yeah and if you're a contractor and you don't want to get involved in espionage and shit like this like your only choice is to defend yourself really which yeah, yeah. you know it's a, it's a bit of a self betraying circle but we you know we, we see our main character you know, do things that's not exactly rational. You know, like he like there's a scene where he's like fighting that British agent, and instead of like, okay, I'm in a bad situation, I'll surrender. Like, no, he tries to attack him and get out of the situation. Yeah, you can you interpret know. that uh, as him not being like a contractor. I don't know. I I sometimes felt like it was actually trying to uh, uh, undermine the idea of those rules of them being like hard and fast rules, like especially like Yin, for example. A doll's not supposed to be able to do that. Yin does it, uh, and we see with. Uh, uh, another doll that we show up later in the show, uh, we see that doll as well uh, start to de uh, develop autonomy, feelings, etc. So yeah. I, I don't view these rules as hard and fast. I view these as functional. Oh, I, I, I don't. like. I, I kind of view them as just like, okay, this is what we know about contractors. They're primarily going to go with, with this. But, you know, you know, there are exceptions to the rule. Which, by the way, I, I don't know if anyone else felt this way, but I I felt like November 11's uh, intro scene was a little bit of a callback to Big O. Because, you know, yes. he, he's, he's, yeah, he's got the briefcase, he's sets it down, they talk about it, helps that his VA is pretty similar to the Japanese and, like, both uh, Japanese, a and then, like, oh, you're not going to agree to my terms, and you're going to try and, like, double-cross me? I'm just going to blow up the, uh, my suitcase. Bye-bye. It's, like, total, like, remake of, like, the first five minutes of the big O in some ways. So I, I, I thought that was probably a wink and a nod uh, to that show, which I appreciated. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. The, the thing about contractors, uh, they sort of remind me of stories about AI developing sentience and whatnot, um, and, and becoming more human, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, so I guess you could. There are some similarities between this series and uh, uh, Ghost in the Shell standalone co- standalone complex. So at least I've seen it uh, recommended. I've also seen. Yeah, um, I would say about yeah. like in, in Ghost I mean, in the Shell's it's case, it's somewhat similar in that regards. But obviously, have you more supernatural stuff going on here? I mean, I also want to really praise the shot composition, the directing. Uh, this is a show where, like, a lot of shows today will have. Of, like let's say shot composition directing which is like the subpar uh where everything is incredibly flat looking this show is never like that um right um uh- I would also, uh, I guess, given that you're talking about the visuals, um, I would say that the ac- action scenes were short but uh, done well. Um, they're they're, they're, yeah, sh- like, uh, they're short and they come out of nowhere, and and there's always consequences to them. Like they establish early on that hey, uh, Hayes electrocution powers can just kill you, and they never ever uh, compromise on that. They they make it very like every time that he gets his target. And he electrocutes you, and he wants you dead. You're you dead. dead. Like there, the, there's no. I have special powers, or he didn't shock me enough this time. No, Th- and, there was and... one time. There was one time um, when uh, he, he electro- uh, electrocuted uh, Huang. Uh, okay, but he... again, we, we there are a number of times actually where he chooses to knock someone out with a lower level of electricity. But that, well, all... that... yeah, generally, yeah, yeah. And, and like those are always people that he doesn't want to kill for whatever the, the and, and it's not as relevant as far as that goes. But it, it, and but it, the whole show has has a feeling like that where it does not pull punches with that regards. There are so many characters that die through this to the point that at the start I was almost wondering, oh geez, is this going to be like a every character that gets introduced? dies type of show but no they 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 start to buck trend and they uh make it clear won't always follow that formula but at the same time you, you get a sense very early on of how incredibly dangerous uh this world is and how much uh, other people are wise not to get caught up in all this but, but at the same time yeah, i mean a, all... a great example of the lethal combat shit is like i think it was one of the first episodes or something like that like he gets like pumped like full clip of a pistol and then you find out it's like oh Oh, you know, he's got a bulletproof trench coat. If he didn't have that trench coat, he'd be dead. Like, combat yes. is incredibly lethal in Darker Than Black. Like, if you go into combat, you know, you're go- you're not going to come out unscathed. Yeah, and it's not like... Uh, admittedly, that uh, that uh, bulletproof coat thing was a little... Uh, a, a little nutty. But aside from that, like, everything is pretty dang grounded. Like, there's no one who has an ability which says, I am invulnerable to bullets. I care about it. Uh, everyone uh, can be shot killed just as easily as the other. They just have uh, special, usually offensive powers. Yeah, which is why I, I didn't, uh, when it came, I didn't really expect the I guess comedy uh, two-part two episode about uh, uh, the the detective and his, uh, I guess, V uh, sidekick. Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought that was a nice idea. Uh, you know, I was half expecting um, Hay to kill those people at some point. Like, he's like, you know too much, Zap. Yeah, same here. I was kind of expecting something to happen to them, but no, they, they're just there. Yeah, like, I was expecting them to, like, you know, they they see the Black Reaper, and, and Hay's like, well, gotta kill you now. You've seen too much. No, sponsored, no. This murder's been sponsored by Pizza Hut. No. <laughs> I, I'd already seen enough of Hay trying to uh, avoid uh, killing people, etc. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking more. I'm, I'm joking yeah. about that. Yeah, I was thinking more of uh, like because since they got involved uh, to show that uh, oh, it, it's a bad thing, but, but it's it's sort of a self parody, a, a little bit of the genre, like. Uh, when the detective is introduced, he's introduced. He's talking about himself uh, in a room filled with very, uh, like, smoke. Yeah, film noir style. Uh, it was a rainy. It was a raining sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> And he, he describes a himself hot as and walked, I walked into my, a, a hot day and walked into my, uh, walked to my office. She was carrying a submachine gun. Wait, submachine gun? Whoops. <laughs> yeah, and, and he was describing uh, describing himself as uh, hard boiled. Whereas uh, you know that character... reminds me of yeah. it reminds me of one of the main characters from Kamen Rider W who describes himself as hard boiled, but he gets buck broken like almost every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whereas a character like uh, well, you Juan... know we've got to discuss Kamen Rider at some point. There, there, there's some pretty good shows. 
yeah, yeah. Um, whereas a character like uh, Huang uh, is actually uh, hard boiled, <laughs> if, you, if you want to put it that way. Um, yeah, and I, and I like that every character, like you pull, uh, every character is properly developed, humanized. Everyone's got backstory. Like you've got, uh, I forget his name, but he's the uh, the, the main associate. No, not Hua, not not the cat. The main associate uh, who smokes a lot. Uh, uh, for Huang and Yin and He, and he tends to be the one that chooses. Well, the cat's called Mao, so I think he. I think oh, I think Mao. Wong is the guy thinking. Yeah, oh, Mao's okay. the cat. Okay, Mao's the cat. Yeah, okay. I think Wong. Yeah, it is Wong. Wong's the guy who smokes. He's the normal guy, essentially. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, he oftentimes will come across where he wants. You you, you think for a while. Okay, he's he's like the unreasonable. Uh, uh, like he, he's just the robotic stuck up with the association one with the syndicate one, but no, we you get like a two parter episode down the line where it goes into his whole tragic backstory, and, and you you get to see how he got roped up in this thing, why he is so fearful of the syndicate, and you've got so many good examples like that. It, it, it's really, really well put together. Like, a, a, every character who you might dismiss as being, like, a little out of it, a little nutty. You, you know, a, a good example is, like, people can easily uh, dismiss Denethor, the steward of Gondor, in uh, Return of the King, as being, like, kind of crazy and just sort of someone who's given up and stuff like that. I know in the books he's slightly different, but there are no Denethors in this show. There are people who appear to be like Denethor, but there really aren't. Um, I found out that the director for this series also directed uh, Bull, uh, Bull's Reign. Mm -hmm. um, if you have seen that. Oh, yeah, that's I, 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 I can feel some of it. I've never completed through Wolf's Reign. This is uh, a, as, like, plotting-wise... I, I would say it has a similar... I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I would say it has a similar tone and kind of, like, a depressing color palette. Like, mm -hmm. I would definitely say, like, at least when it comes to, like, art direction, like, Wolf's Reign shares a lot in common with Darker Than Black. You know, the dark color palettes, the kind of, like, you know, kind of desolate scenery, kind of giving you this kind of grim kind of picture of, like... Yeah, the world is a very cold and ca uncaring place. Yeah, Wolf's Rain would tend to have, I don't want to say totally more simplistic uh, characters, but, like, they, it, it would tend to be less dense and have less going on episode per episode, I also uh, feel, I'd say. I also feel like this series, even though it's dark, it feels like anime because it has anime tropes, uh, mm -hmm. and it has, like, for example, there's a, there's a talking cat, and uh, Yin is basically... Uh, Ra Ayanami clone. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the girl from the detective agency says we've got to go to the hot springs. Everyone's waiting for it. Who's everyone? <laughs> they never do get to that hot springs, but you do get to see a split second of a clip uh, of a clip of them there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I, I feel ripped off. I wish we had a darker than black episode with like infiltrating a hot spring. <laughs> uh, Albania man, um, what are your thoughts on the series? Are you there, Albania man? No. Okay. Um, Did the fucking quotient um, Albanians like fucking cut his, cut his internet again? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know? Oh, are you back? Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. I okay, we thought the thought... militias cut your internet again. No, something wrong. Croatia, but I, the the Croatia Bosnian <laughs> Serbs try to cut your internet again. So I was gonna say, I thought the series was pretty good for the story. I kind of wish that not so much that they explained the setting, but I kind of wish that they kind of explore more of the setting where it's not exclusively in Tokyo. There could be other countries involved. But overall, I did enjoy it. They definitely could. Uh, I mean, they do that a bit in like the a... OVA and the sick. Sorry to cut you off. Um, I know they do that a little bit in the OVA and in the second season of the anime that doesn't exist. So, you know, continue. Yeah, that was my impression as well. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another to tongue-in-cheek thing which they do is uh, that when Hei is... Um, he like his room, like his code, uh, the police, uh, the, the police, the code which the police has given him is uh, BK201, and the number of his room is 201. And that, that, that's an, like when he's at the cult and he has to read from um, a pamphlet, he, he just happens to have to read from page 201. Uh, but 
there's no significance to it. Uh, it's just, mm. uh, yeah, just any. Yeah, you know, I wonder if it's like a numerology thing or like some aesthetic thing they want to throw into the show or just like, oh, this sounds cool. BK201. Um, actually, now that I think about it, since it's like relating to stars, it could actually relate to like a certain star or something like that or some numerology thing now that I think about it. We might have to look that up later. I guess I one thing I will say of Hey, I wouldn't say a 90s action hero is a perfect description because although he is brutal, he's not 90s anti hero. Oh, no, not action hero. 90s anti hero. Okay. Although he is brutal, he's not so much so I just kill random people for no reason. He has a reason for why he kills people, but he's not so much 100% brutal. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, fun fact Cloud Strife and like the main character of Final Fantasy VIII are also included in like the 90s anti hero shit, like okay. toned down versions of it, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, personally, I, I liked uh, how they chose to make uh, the fact that contractors uh, exist um, be a secret rather than in the open. A problem that I had with uh, Tokyo Ghoul, for example, was that uh, the world is the same as our world, but you, you would think that it would be different when there's, yeah. Yeah, the, the thing I like uh, uh, about the setting, you know, it does feel a little bit different from the real world, even though, like, uh, ostensibly it is the same, because everyone does know about the gate. Everyone does know that. I, I think most people know that uh, the stars uh, that got shot uh, are all fake now and stuff like that. And, and so everyone has this feeling that there's something wrong with the world, that, that like, the world has left them behind in some capacity, and, and, and something supernaturally has happened, but they don't really know how to judge it or deal with it, and they just sort of go on with their lives. Uh, what What did you think? Did you find Did you find the central question about whether the contractors are no longer human or not interesting, or did you feel like the answer was obvious? So spend too much time on that. I mean, I thought it was fine. I thought it was well done. I mean, yeah, it's going for all the, all the contractors human. Yes, but like this whole like the first two episodes, let's say for example, uh, they really try hammer that in and. You've got Hay uh, dealing with this one girl and uh, who he's trying to smuggle out. And on the one hand, you'd like to think it's out of compassion that he's doing this, but at the same time, he is so robotic, so focused, and so s singular-minded. You can really see how this could just be like you're programmed to do it. You do it, and all the other contractors are more or less like that. That you see in that episode, those two episodes, they're totally untrustworthy. And by the end, he reveals uh, to the woman, yeah, he somewhat is betraying her and stuff like that. And, and so you can, so that reinforces the idea uh, that they uh, that the contractors are just programmable robots. But then you see a little bit at the end where he admit uh, where basically. T uh, tulls off his uh, employer a little bit on something so you go, hmm, maybe that's not the whole story. By, like, further in, you see more uh, a lot more contractors who are fairly uh, open and, and more likable, like November 11. So that's hey, November 11 is great. Like, his whole team is quite fun. Yeah, so, so by that point, you're like, okay, these contractors are basically here. But up until then, it's like a slow burn, a slow slow reveal of like are these people really like that and you could kind of go either way yeah i think the problem i had with with it was i guess the last few episodes the last arc uh, the conclusion um where they were uh, there, there was a terrorist group of uh, contractors trying to get contractors recognized as a uh, human uh, felt a, li a little bit on the nose, like it was a, bit, a little bit on the nose. Um, and personally, I enjoyed a lot more, you know, the the little stories um, as, as opposed to the conclusion where I felt like it sort of became a kind of X-Men-like setting after, because at the end of the story, the, the fact that um, contractors exist becomes uh, public, uh, known to the public. In all fairness, though, in the halfway point, it kind of did turn a bit X Men ish, where the old, uh, I think it's the Primrose group, their whole objective is oh, they want the, to have human rights, while at the same time, they. <laughs> Their method of doing that is pretty much genocide. Yeah, pretty, pretty much it seems. 
Oh yeah, um, should we mention that they're like you know like the like the main terrorist organization is led by like our main character's ex girlfriend or something like that. Well, yeah, and and what I what I really appreciate about that is, and th this goes to show the attention to detail in this show. The whole like first season, we keep seeing uh, at the end of the opening as howling in the shadow, and you see hey his face getting stroked uh by this one girl who kind of looks like c2 stroking his face and you see that through the first whole season you see that at the end of every open. and you don't see a hint of this woman you don't see a hint of a really having romantic interest in anyone uh he he's able to keep everything very professional uh at any sort of time where he slightly bends orders it's incredibly rational and it, it, it's incredibly high up and really not ending things too much. Uh, uh, and then he hears that the, we get introduced to this Amber girl. We see that she's still alive. And Hay is like, no, fuck your orders. Fuck you, chief. I, I'm... <laughs> I, I, I'm going... I'm super male grind set Batman. Now. I'm on the hunt. And, and he is just, like, totally obsessed. And, and, and he he electrocutes his own boss. He, he, he goes and, and fucking runs after this. He says, like, oh, you don't want me to contact her? No, no. Screw you. And it's like, you've never seen him act this passionate. Before. Yeah, like, you've never seen him act this never. angry, too. Like, he's pissed. He's pissed, he's angry, and, like, this show does bits like that all over the place and it speaks to incredibly incredibly good character writing and, and, and overall writing in general like n none of these characters are uh li like mere stereotypes or archetypes like they're, they're well-rounded like that and you'll see them just suddenly out act out of character in these ways a bunch of times. There are very I can't think of any character that was totally one dimensional aside from like total background. Who gives a fuck uh, in this show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Actually, actually, I wanted to ask you guys like, what did you think about like the team dynamic between them all? Because um, I, I I think they had a really great dynamic in like kind of at the end when they all like most like half of them like die one by one. I don't know. Like I was kind of like shitting a tear, you know, especially like Wong and Mao. Same here, yeah. Um, I, yeah. I like uh, Huang's uh, character arc with him. Um, I, I, I love the end where, like, Hiei lights a cigarette and then, like, yeah, um, Yin gives him a hug and he's like, oh, you fucking make me go soft. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Damn and, fucking uh, contractors. All right, l l listen, pour one out for the two homies that didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you keep spoiling everything. Uh, That's not I, necessary. Fuck you. <laughs> Oh, should have watched. Where did you Where did you leave off, Heraculous? Oh, I left off at around episode twenty. Oh. Uh, yeah, I I knew uh, I'm not that big of a surprise, but I like I, for the viewers, I don't like <laughs> making it spoilery unless it has to be. Yeah, um, I think f uh, from the team, um, my favorite character was probably Huang. Um, and um, his I liked Mao quite a bit. No, he 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 was fun. Uh, we get an episode, of course, devoted to him, uh, and people like. Uh, but yeah, I I do. I always felt like he, he felt like the one with the most. Uh, uh, that was most had everything straight on his head, uh, and, and oftentimes the coordinator of things. Like, whereas, uh, Hay could get totally caught up in the mission or doing things as he wished, whereas Huang was like, uh, was the type of risk averse guy, uh, who would sometimes have his nerve break, and Mao felt like the one, uh, that was the most reliable out of those. Honestly, I think Mao was just kind of like more. Of a middleman, like is it? He's just there to stop Hay and Wong from killing each other. Pretty much, like they, they, and you can tell, like those two, and I and I, and I enjoy that, like the even though they're like partners and stuff like that, and they're never unduly uh, angry or aggressive at one another. But you can tell these, there's like no fond affection here, and they would like kill each other if need be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, fuck. Uh, Wong tried to do it when Hay wanted to see his ex girlfriend, so you know. I've heard that uh, the OVA is about Yen. Apparently. Yes. Um, it helps fill in some of the gaps for season two, the the season that doesn't exist. Okay, give me a primer. Why do people dislike season two? I've seen that it's about an entirely new main character, and it's basically almost a spin-off at that point. 
So why do people dislike it? So? Um, the syndicate gets destroyed in like a few episodes. Um, main character becomes like a, a drunk, alcoholic child beater. Um, some of the characters we follow aren't fun. We follow a fucking tranny around, for example. Like, it's just like all the stuff that made the first season cool is just not there anymore. And what made the first season good isn't there anymore. I mean, it's like the, the main, the new main character, quote unquote, is being mentored. I mean, yeah, it's cool to see a character slowly turn into a contractor but like outside of that like aside from that in like a few moments the show is just really boring and bad and makes things way too overly convoluted and a lot of the characters we follow are not likable like we follow like this fucking lesbian around who <laughs> makes out with people inappropriately and shit like that like it's just mm. not fun well yeah. i was also gonna put to that to uh, what i said before even if season two wasn't god awful the way that the season one concluded i thought it Personally, it didn't need a second season. No, yeah, I think it's I, fine. I got that impression, and I got the impression uh, when I was reading, like, the basic concept of season two, that they were very much, like, trying, aware of that, and that they were trying to say, okay, how can we do something slightly different with this world? <laughs> so, which uh, side story was your favorite, and which was your least favorite? Oh, fuck, Dang. that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna like, say my favorite was probably the one where, like, Hay was chasing out after his ex-girlfriend. I think that was a lot of fun. That was, <laughs> or that was or fun. when Yin got kidnapped, uh, well, kidnapped by that person in knew her before she became a doll. Like, those two episodes, like, those two arcs, I guess, were my favorites. I guess my least favorite would have been, um, um, I, w- I would have to say maybe the first mission. See, but even that one, I really, really I, I mean, like. This is in the context of, like, like, here's the thing, I like the show. I just think, like, compared to the, oh, no, actually, no, not that one. Um, it would be when he goes and infiltrates the janitor at, at Heaven's Gate. Or, or the guy that's, like, sniffing socks, actually. Now that I think about it, yeah, the guy who's sniffing socks. That was a fucking boring episode. Yeah. yeah. I was less interested in the Yakuza one as much. Uh, it was all right. Was, it was all right. It was less interesting. I really liked... The first two arcs uh, actually really, really sold me on the show. Like, both have this tragic heroine thing going on. And yep. uh, uh, in both of them, like... The, the, the heroines there, they just get caught up in circumstances beyond their control, and they're really, really likable. Like, they're really well written as, like, normal people, but it's not, like, the platonic normal person. It's like, th- this this is, like, an actual person who has traits, who is, like, maybe a little rebellious, who is maybe uh, doesn't get along along with her father for very discreet reasons and uh stuff like that and and it's it was very easy to relate to all of them and also very easy to feel like oh my gosh how are these why are these poor girls getting lost in, in in this world of death how are they getting caught up in this this is horrible it's incredibly tragic honestly though i was a bit worried that the whole series was going to be hey uh, you know talking to broken women or something <laughs> <laughs> well, he does yeah, he's, the, he's the broken woman whisperer <laughs> I'd say yes for to me. It's either a tie between uh, any any time the detectives be like a bumbling a PI show up, or I really enjoy the episode where I think it's like this girl who's lost her contract powers in South America kind of regrets the whole idea of her killing all those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good one too. My yeah, oh yeah, the, I forgot. Didn't she have to like drink children's blood or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I- I it's think kind that... of, like that's the that's one of the tragic things about contracts as well is that like some of the stuff they have to do to use their powers is kind of fucked up. Like like you got this chick who literally has to drink children's blood. Yeah, but I I didn't feel like it it was dark but not edgy uh, because for example they didn't they didn't actually show her uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're, like the show's actually surprisingly like toned down. Like for example, like if you bring we, I'm I'm gonna bring up Tokyo Ghoul right. Like Tokyo Ghoul, especially in the manga, like it does go back like very specific details of what's going going on like it's it, it, it gets quite edgy at times right like this is a lot more laid a lot more subdued than you'd think yeah uh-huh. it's not a helsing ultimate so well, no and it, it's, not, it's not trying to be overly gory but in like just that case for example like if it showed those bits it would just be totally gross out and it wouldn't be useful to the story but instead you see her talk about it see her imply it 
and you see her reaction to it and, and the way she thinks back on it and it sells it totally she is utterly horrified and again it's not a oh she uh, sh she shows up for two seconds and she starts wailing it's a she's catatonic most of the time and, and, and she like says nothing till like th this other character baits it out of her and, and then she starts recounting her story like, it doesn't feel like uh l l like someone that was just told to wail on screen for, um, for the course of the plot <laughs> By random, I, I saw what you posted, and honestly, I, I appreciate that it's only 25 episodes. Uh, <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't always stay its welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like 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 the OVA is only like a couple of episodes long, and season two that doesn't exist, you know, has zero episodes, so you know. Okay, I'll just watch the OVAs. Now, as far as my least favorite episode, well, I personally didn't like the episode of the police chief and uh, her basically a rich uh, Yakuza princess, well, best friend. Didn't like that episode at all. Yeah, it reminded me a bit of, uh, what what's that Quentin Tarantino movie? Um... Uh, give me a hint. <laughs> The one about the female assassin. Um, oh, Kill, Kill Bill. Bill. Kill Bill. Like at the end of um, anyway. At the end of I... Kill Bill. Kill Bill Part One. That's yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah. I I was gonna say I thought it was a little less strong perhaps than the other ones, but like I still enjoyed it. Yeah, and. It, it, I enjoyed the bits where it, like, it, it was good development for the main female police chief, and okay, it made things it. very personal for her, and you, you understand, like, the stakes that she has, stakes that, and, and you understand, uh, uh, uh and, and she's left with this real quandary at the end of, like, what, uh, what was the cause of things? Does she bear any guilt or responsibility for someone else's choice? That, I, I guess, in a way, that episode was a little bit... Like, it didn't really have to do that much with contractors, per se. No. Like, no. It, it, okay, it, found it, the gift. Proper gift now. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was mostly about those two and their relationship, and the contractors wore a vehicle. Right. Uh, so, uh, you compared this show to Big O, uh, but I feel like Big O wasn't nearly as dark as this, so I no. can't... And I think, yeah. like, Big O was more noir. This is a bit more yeah. toned down than this, and also, there's no giant robots. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, at least with uh, <clears throat> Dark and Black, it doesn't have the old second half, where it's just everything is all mind-bending and all psychological. Yeah, metaphors about tomatoes. You know, you, you, you just got to plow the field just right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember any unintentional humor uh, Am like I that. Tomato too. <laughs> the mood, uh, the mood, sort of reminded me of uh, Lane a little bit, yes. even even though this is a bit more talkative than than Lane, I guess. Listen, Lane is a lot more about the like. L listen, if you thought that Dark and Black was being subtle, uh, Lane's almost like a painting in an art museum. Like you're supposed to study the painting and figure out the uh, the esoteric symbolism. It's like, why is that assassin wearing a Pizza Hut sponsored trench coat? Hmm. <laughs> what does this mean? I I've also seen uh, the series compared to Psychopaths, but I felt like Psychopaths uh, was a lot. Psychopaths was way easier. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I you know you have a, you, you have like the necrophilic lesbian or like the guy who like hunts people for game. Yeah, yeah. And uh... well, that that show was more interested in showing like the underside of crime and stuff like that in uh and real psycho uh psychologizing criminals and stuff like that uh i i honestly almost disagree i feel like this show is edgy uh quote unquote like just because psychopaths yeah it's obviously a lot more violent and obviously it has a lot i guess you could say it has a lot more over the top edgy things going on but the style in this show the style of this show is such like 90s edge to a t oh i'm not saying the show is edgy i'm saying that psychopaths is edgier than this mm -hmm. but i'm just saying that psychopaths doesn't really have as much of that styling to it yeah yeah i mean um uh... One thing which I was worried about when getting, getting into this series was the mask. It looked very, very anime, to put it bluntly. <laughs> but it looks uh, cool. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Um, but yeah. dude, his nickname is cool as well, the Black Reaper. K kind of generic, but yeah. <laughs> not, not a bad nickname to have. Uh, 
Um, you know, it, it sucks that his star name is like BK201. They could have been like BR201. So he's like, he's the Black Reaper star, the star of death. You know, like Fist of the North Star, when you see that pattern in the sky, you are going to die. So when you see his, when you see his star light up in the night sky, you realize you're about to die. Yeah. Uh, as for my least favorite episode uh, arc, uh, it would be, well, either the ending, but that's not really an arc. That's just, uh, you know, tying the loose ends together for a conclusion. So instead, I would have to go with the same as Bio Gundam, the one where uh, Hay goes to a facility in the in the wall, I think. And because the motives of th- that uh, scientist didn't make any sense. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, they did to a certain extent like they do but um I, like i just think it was one of the more weaker episodes i, also... I like go ahead albania well i was gonna i was gonna say i thought hate i thought the way hate treated uh, i think it's like the covert agent kind of poorly yeah. i don't know why he became so much of a dick to her because she's incompetent i i oh. really like that about that like the the indian girl who was like contracted by them you can tell he's being incredibly incredibly like protective of her like he does not yes uh he he, he doesn't want her to uh, get involved in all this like he he knows that there's especially someone as naive as her there is such a high chance of her dying if she sticks her neck into it and every time she's slightly sticks neck into it he either chews her out really harshly and, and there's like some interesting stuff where like she's clearly developing a crush on him and he's clearly like don't don't fucking get involved uh and you you, you also you have a pretty nice I, I thought it was requisitely freaky like I, I i really liked it because of like how freaky the other side of the gate was how, how much I don't understand it how much it was like you go on to the other side you're walking to hell you're not coming back it it it, it was yeah uh you, you people get these psychic ghosts and stuff like that and Go there's, and there's also in. a really there's also a really cool bit where you're not entirely sure who killed this one witness for a little bit uh and, and that was a really neat touch yeah i didn't really like the mystery yeah yeah but oh, it, it, it did last long and anyway. <laughs> you kind of knew you would, you would get the answer in an episode so um yeah but it, i didn't hate it or anything just not that memorable uh so i th- i feel like to discuss the series further um arc by arc would not you know you just go watch it uh so i i guess uh, do you guys have any other things to add uh, um yeah watch the ova it's not half bad and season two doesn't exist okay I mean, watch this show like i i went in with medium expectations where i i'd heard about this show and i thought okay this might be good but not really sure and i was absolutely blown away the, the, this is like this is a top anime this is like a top anime ever. what about you george uh, i would say yeah go watch it considering that well i would say watch the first episodes just to give uh us the not the first two of say the first four just to give a good feeling if you like those first four then keep going if not then you won't like dark and black oh sh- yeah yeah uh, and that's one of the things i will enjoy is it has it introduces the show incredibly well and, and like it introduces the premise and it introduces feel the tone how the show is going to be like and i was absolutely- yeah, I, I was like pretty enthralled like after a few couple of episodes i'm like okay i want to see what happens like this is cool yeah um like i wasn't really that interested in the questions some of the questions that the series was trying to ask but i did like the mood it's a good mood um yeah and with that said shall we end the stream oh are we giving scores oh yeah sure why not uh, i'll give it why don't you start george mm, well, Benjamin, I, would, yeah. I would say i would give it close to an eight but probably a 7.5 i enjoy it but like i said before i kind of wish that it would explore more of the setting not so much explain it but kind of just explore more Heracles? nine out of ten yeah uh i i want i want to hear what, what he will watch the ending as well mm. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Bogo? Um, I'll give this like seven, seven point five out of ten. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a decent, solid show. Um, I have a few gripes or issues with it. Like, some of the episodes I think are weaker than others. But like, when the sh- when the show hits, it fucking hits. It, it hits it out of the park. Um, um, but like, he, here's like, my... yeah, it's like this is a very decent show and a solid staple from like the early two thousands. And also, yeah, they like... don't make anime like this anymore. Yeah, here, here's here's why I'm rating it so high. I, I think like. 
like, okay, what piece of media, anime, TV, movie, whatever, what piece of visual media has come out in the past decade that's better than this? I can't think uh, of Apparently it. none so far. Uh, I mean, since when? Since this came out? Or? No, since uh, a decade. I mean, I, I'm just arbitrarily saying, so since uh, 2013. Didn't uh, Steins Gate come out in 2013? I I'm think? not a huge fan of Steins Gate. I see. Teach uh, it's Yeah, it's hard to compare that to Steins Gate. Uh, I, I'm not yeah, even talking like... about, like, direct comparisons. I'm just talking about, okay, what is a show that impressed you as much in terms of like, the writing, the storytelling, the tone, the feel, everything? I mean, I would say that Steins Gate, the visual novel's not bad. I mean, the anime's not bad either, but, um, you know, they did have to, like, paraphrase, like, a very long fucking visual novel, but they did a good job of what they had. They got the core shit down, but, like, yeah. Like, like yeah, Dark of the... Like, yeah, I get you. Like... So I would give it a 7.5 out of 10 because for, for me, an 8 would be, I don't know, Code Geass or Garen Lagan or Gunbuster. And this was not as good as that, I thought. Um, yeah. yeah. And with that said, I guess we can stop the stream.